In today's video, we are going to be talking about BMS instrumentation weatherproofing. I think this is a really important topic to discuss because a lot of people think that if they buy an IP65 temperature sensor or pressure transmitter, they can send it off to site and just forget about it and it's going to last for 10 years installed outside in the rain. And that is not the case. There's a lot more things to consider other than just the RP rating. So in this week's video, we will first start off by discussing what the two numbers mean in the RP rating, 54, 65, 66, what the first number and the second number means. And then we'll move on and discuss some other things that you really should consider because the, just the RP rating is not enough in my opinion. Let's jump into Wikipedia and see what they have to say about this. So they're calling it an IP code. I call it an IP rating. I guess it's the same thing. An IP stands for ingress protection. I'll just read this sentence out here. Classifies and rates the degree of protection provided by mechanical casings and electrical enclosures against intrusion, dust, accidental contact, and water. Now, of these two digits, the first digit is solid particle protection, which I already just consider as dust. And the second digit is liquid ingress protection, which is, in our industry, it's just water. So let's look at the first digit, solid particle protection. Now, as you go down these different numbers here, if you have an IP20 product, it means that it is effective against holes bigger than 12.5 millimeters, for example, fingers. So it'll stop somebody from getting their finger into whatever this thing is. The finger probably won't get in there. If you have an IP30 device, it's effective against greater than 2.5 millimeters, tools or thick wires. So if you have an IP30 device, and you have a bit of cable, it probably won't fit in there, a piece of wire or a, or a tool. IP40, effective against greater than one millimeter. Most wires, slender screws, large ants. I thought it was quite amusing when I saw that large ants. I've never really considered large ants to be a problem for us. Maybe in other industries, you know, insects getting inside boxes is a bigger problem. Then we get down to IP50, dust protected. Ingress of dust is not entirely prevented, but it must not enter in sufficient quantity to interfere with the satisfactory operation of the equipment. This is a common number for us, IP54, for plant rooms where it's not raining. If you have an IP60 device, dust tight. No ingress of dust. Complete protection against contact. Dust tight. A vacuum must be applied. Test duration of up to eight hours based on airflow. So that little table describes to us this dust or solid particle protection. Let's get into the liquid one, which I think is a bit more important. So liquid protection. Let's jump all the way over to five and six, which are the more common numbers that we have. So we have IP65 and IP66. So a five is the second number, water jets. Water projected by a nozzle 6.3 millimeters against enclosure from any direction shall have no harmful effects. Test duration, one minute per square meter for at least three minutes. Water volume, 12.5 liters per minute at a pressure of 30 kPa in a distance. And then the six powerful water jets. Water projected in powerful jets, 12.5 millimeters 100 liters per minute, 100 kPa. What I want you to think about here is this water protection rating in the RP rating. It's talking about having your sensor in a controlled environment and you're blasting a jet of water over it. And depending on how big that nozzle is, how much water and, and the pressure it's coming out, that's what the standard covers. It's a, it's, a, it's a burst of water. That's not exactly the same as something sitting outside in the rain for three years or snow sitting on it for three months of the year 
or really harsh direct sunlight shining onto this thing. And we'll get into that in more detail, but for now, that was just to cover what do those numbers mean? So when you read IP54 or 65 or 66, it'll give you a bit of an idea of what the front number means, what the second number means. Dust protection and water protection. So that gives us an idea of what these two numbers mean. Now, if we look here, I've got a data sheet of a MAMIC pipe temperature sensor. It's a pretty good sensor, powder coated steel, and it's an IP65 enclosure. And you can tell it's IP65 because when you put the lid back on top of this, you can see that the lid sort of forms over the body here and there's a bit of a seal there. So as water lands on the top, the water runs over the top and down the side, the seals underneath, there's a bit of a lip around the edge here. So water doesn't really get onto the seal here if this is installed properly. So the second point here is we have an RP65 sensor. What happens if we install this upside down in the pipe? So it's installed this way around upside down. What will happen is water will run over the pipe down here and then a little bit of water will sit in the seal along this edge and in time that seal will start to degrade and water will start to seep into the sensor. So the point being here is that we have an IP65 sensor. It's sort of weatherproof. Um, it can handle a jet of water over it, but if it's not installed properly, then water will be able to find its way into it and it will fail. So as an example here of an IP65 sensor, that's not gonna last more than a couple of years if not properly installed in the right orientation it's unlikely you'll install a pipe sensor upside down, but you may install a duct mount temperature sensor underneath the duct. And you might think that as the rain falls, it's protected. It probably is, it's not a bad idea actually, but if water does get to around a seam somehow and get onto that upside down installed duct sensor, water could seep into that. Some other sensors, if they're installed sideways, so have a look at the sensor that you're installing What's the best way to install it? How will it be protected from rain and puddles of water seeping into it? Now the next thing is, yeah, the stuffing gland. Now this sensor looks like it comes with a stuffing gland in the box. This is probably an RP65 stuffing gland. The point here is, first of all, the stuffing gland needs to be properly tightened around the cable for it to work. So if you walk around the plant room and you have IP65 sensors outside and you walk past and you find a stuffing gland that hasn't been nicely tightened down onto the cable, you're completely defeating the object. IP65 sensor with a loose stuffing gland, water and moisture will get in there, the sensor will fail over, after a year or two. The second thing is, if your sensor doesn't come with the stuffing gland in a box, you need to make sure that your installer purchases IP65 rated stuffing glands to meet the rating of the sensor. There's no point putting an IP54 stuffing gland onto an IP65 sensor. That's not going to work very well. While we add it, of course, and this might sound pretty stupid, but that lid needs to be properly put on and the, the bolts or the nuts evenly tightened around so it sort of squares on evenly around the seal. Um, I'm pretty sure if you went to 10 construction sites and went and checked every single sensor outside, you'd find one somewhere that the screws weren't tightened down properly. It looks fine, but it actually isn't. There isn't a tight, tight seal on the top of that lid. So here we're talking about, you gotta buy the right thing. It's gotta be installed properly, and it needs to be have the right accessory onto it and closed up properly. And really, I think that this might not be really the responsibility of the installer, probably should be, but commissioning technicians really should be spending more time reading the data sheet of the sensor, and then going and look, is it properly installed as per the data sheet? Is it all tightened up properly, the stuffing gland? Do we need some silicon somewhere? Whatever that might be. So to get weatherproofing, you really need to have an end-to-end -end process, not just what are you gonna buy, put in a box, from the courier, send to site. There's a lot more to it than that. Now, a favorite topic of mine is this. So here we have a 
duct mount air pressure switch. Forget about the switch. We're talking here about this loop in the cable. What does this loop in the cable do? What is its purpose? I'm sure you've walked around plant rooms before and you've seen this loop and you thought that looks quite nice. But it's not there just for looks only. Now, no one ever told me what the loop's for. I remember in the late 90s, my boss just said, Brass, put the loop there all the time. He never told me what it was for or I forgot. So my thoughts at the moment of what this loop's here for is there's two reasons. The first reason is if you want to refit this cable off in here, you can chop it off a few centimeters and then, you know, there's, there's some spare cable here that's going to help. But I think the main reason is that when you have this loop here and water drips down this cable, the water will drip down and then drip off the bottom. Drip off the bottom, drip off the bottom. When the loop's not here and this cable is just sort of pulled up like this, as the cable goes from here up to, you know, the tray or the containment, wherever it goes to, water will run down that cable and it will just sit and pull inside there in the stuffing land. It'll just sit there all the time. So if you're outside where every time it rains, the water comes down here, it'll just drip off all the time. But even if you're inside, you're in a plant room with the roof on, I think you should still have the, the loop here anyway. Because it's not that uncommon for, you know, water to find its way down here from, you know, a leaking pipe or a leaking roof or even just condensation of chilled pipes, for example, they come down here. So even if you have an IP65 stuffing gland, you know, outside, I think that eventually, something like that, I think water is going to just sit there for long enough that it's going to seep through or degrade the quality of that rubber seal. And especially if you're in a plant room with a roof on, when you probably wouldn't have an IP65 sensor and stuffing gland. So for example here, these are, this is definitely not IP65, it's probably IP54 or worse. Um, so that's not an IP, that's an IP54 or less rated stuffing gland. So if any condensation or water from inside a, you know, a, a roofed plant room comes into here, that's definitely going to fail. So I think this loop's super important. Now again, we're talking about buying the, the appropriate sensor for outside, IP65. How is it installed? Is the stuffing gland tight? And is there a loop on the cable? There's a whole bunch of things sort of stacking up here. Let's start wrapping this up. Um, just because you bought an IP65 sensor, it doesn't mean that it's weatherproof, right? It means that it's like, it spray some water onto it proof. It's not weatherproof. It doesn't mean it can sit there with rain on it all day long for five years or snow sitting on top of it or harsh sunlight. Why I say harsh sunlight is that variable speed drives, you can buy an IP66 variable speed drive, but that keypad on the outside, it really doesn't like to have harsh sunlight shining on it. So after a few years of, of hard sunlight on it, that liquid crystal display and the plastic buttons will start to fade and deteriorate. So here's an example again where the variable speed drive's got a really good ingress protection rating. It's not weatherproof because the sun, it's part of the weather. So in my opinion, if you are installing something outside, even if you have an IP65 instrument, you need to either have a hat on top or it's in a little box was a bag over it. Um, we used to always install, we, when you bought these linear valve actuators, you'd buy the bag for it. Not a plastic bag, a proper purpose designed bag that would pull over it and then you sort of cable tie the bottom on. Or, you know, variable speed drives. Yes, it's RP66. It has to be in an enclosure if it's outside. Doesn't like the sun, doesn't want snow on it if you live in one of those countries, and doesn't want water puddly on it or raining on it all the time. IP65 does not mean it's weatherproof. There's a lot more work for us to do. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next week.